All right, and it looks like we are live here. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, today is July the 14th, 2022. Uh, my name is Junior, the host of The Daily Digital, where we keep you all well informed of what's going on in our digital world. Um, there's a lot of technology that's been going on around. And I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of it so that you can make the proper decisions uh, in the near future. So the first thing that we have on the block today is going to be about learning all about Web 3.0 and how to become a developer for it. Um, the second thing is about how Apple has been, even for the past uh, five, six, maybe even seven years, has been transitioning their business over into the metaverse um, with like some AR, VR technology. The next thing is going to be uh, all about Meta, which is you know Facebook's Facebook's parent company. Um, they have already been transitioning over into the metaverse and they are now allowing people to help them develop it through their new platform uh, and then the last thing here today is just going to be a little bit about electric vehicles if you are a fan of electric vehicles this just may interest you um, because they have to get worked on there just because they're electric they're not gas doesn't mean stuff doesn't break down um, but we're going to see how exactly that process works all right so before we get started, we're going to take a brief break, and then we'll jump right into it. All right, and welcome back, everybody. So the first thing on the docket today is a company called LearnWeb3.io. That's a brilliant, brilliant domain name right there. Um, whoever grabbed that up, I don't know how long they grabbed it up. Uh, and I don't know how long this website has been active, how long they've been actually teaching people about Web3. But whoever did, um, or the amount of people that did, this is actually a wonderful, wonderful thing for people like me uh, who are very technology savvy that really want to get into um, development work, who really want to get into um, creating for Web3, um, NFTs, DAOs, DeFi, smart contracts, all of that good stuff. Uh, and if you are one of those people, this is a completely free, yes, I did say free, 100% free from what I understand. It's going to be free forever, but it's a completely free way to go ahead and do it. So what you end up doing is coming to this website, learnweb3.io, and then you go ahead and just pick, pick on a track that you want to do. And then from there, you really just start learning. Uh, as you can see here, forever plan is $0, $0 per month forever unlimited amount of learning build cool stuff <laughs> um, learn progressively you can just basically learn on your own learn from topics from a to z uh, everything about web 3 everything about smart contracts nfts and all that cool stuff um, and yeah so what are you waiting for me myself i just came across this probably about uh, a week or two ago it was shared um, by a wonderful soul on twitter and i jumped right on it said it was awesome and i'm actually going to start learning it uh, i've been learning nft smart contracts um, on the side already uh, so really this is just right up my alley and i'm hoping that a lot of you take part in it as well there's not not a lot of people um you know in this space right now so it is definitely a game changer uh, i've heard you know money is a major player for you i've heard people getting uh jobs inside of web3 companies inside of DAOs and stuff like that uh, for upwards of like 500 grand a year. So $500,000 uh, just to help build Web3, just to help with smart contracts, NFTs. Because I mean, if you think about it, Board Ape Yacht Club, those NFTs are going for like millions of dollars. So whoever created that, whoever created the, um, uh, what's it called? The Ape Coin that came out, whoever created the metaverse for them, I mean, that is a really top tier company that you can actually work for. You get really, really paid. So uh, the next thing here is Apple. So there is a series of events that has been going on with Apple uh, over the past few years. I'm not a huge, huge Apple fan. I have an iPhone. I have a MacBook computer um, just because it works for me. Um, but I'm just not like a, you know, a diehard Apple fan. But when it comes to AR, especially AR and also with VR, mixed reality all that stuff i definitely am a diehard fan of that and i want to try and keep up with what's going on behind the scenes and it looks like apple has been doing a whole lot behind the scenes 
this first first article here comes out in 2019 and basically it just talks about how they came out with a patent and this patent was for um, finger mounted device with sensors and haptics uh, so they are essentially going to allow you to um, uh, was it called manage stuff in the real world through your augmented reality or through your virtual reality um, each finger wearable is outfitted with a number of sensors sensor types of optical sensors for one measure the movements of the fingertips accelerometers help measure motion uh, these enable this enables a number of touchless gestures for navigation and control including taps force input persistent touch input air gestures and or other uh, users input the patent says uh, I believe the patent was actually is another image in the patent um, I believe the patent was actually developed a while ago though yeah 2017 they released AR kit uh, which you don't know AR kit would probably do a segment on what that is also but it's their essentially their platform uh, for developers to create AR technology um, stuff like that um, but yeah so not to spend too much time on this as you can see back in 2019 they came out with this patent and then as we move a little bit forward here uh, this article came out March 16 2021 again I didn't go back in and um, check every single one of these dates on the patent and stuff like that I'm just kind of going based on the article when it came out uh, and this one is from Apple Insider. So Apple AR motion controllers may detect fig fingers without covering the hand. So essentially what that is is that as you can see this guy here is wearing this VR headset device. And he's going to be able to sense motion through his hands without having to actually wear those gloves. So the gloves that Apple had the patent on before, they may not actually be needed. Um, they have other patents. Um, as you can see here that was granted to them uh, this one was called the electronic device system with controllers and it basically just looks like they are allowing them to utilize um, their hands just the gestures in their hands um, inside the metaverse through those AR glasses through those VR headsets um, without having to actually put on any gloves for that so for example the patent suggests a number of different solutions but they all seem to have the same outcome of leaving the fingers as unencumbered as possible finger detection is possible with each but typically with the result of keeping the fingertip free uh, the basic design appears to involve a tubular shape gripped with the thumb and fingers with ring sections for the fingers to slip through like a form of a knuckle duster whatever that is the main differences in design largely relate to the elements that stem from the rings with a view of interacting with the fingers. Uh, here's another type of design for it, I guess, in the in the patent, the images and everything there. Um, here's another design as well, where it's going to use some sort of like um, pointer stick, I guess you call it. Um, let's see, the list of sensors used to detect the finger and external surfaces could include optical sensors, radio frequency sensors, acoustic sensors. I mean, there's just a lot of sensors on here. Two-dimensional force sensors and motion sensors. Like, there's a, really a lot of technology that goes into, you know, all of these devices, all of these um, cool things that we interact with. I mean, just even our iPhones. Uh, some people don't know that you can, like, set your iPhone to double tap or triple tap the back of it. Um, and that there is like a, I don't know, sensor in itself. Uh, to know if it's a double tap or a triple tap and you can set it to do certain things like take a screenshot or lock your phone or what have you um, So the next one after that I found was this one about the Google Glass, which is really hilarious because um, Heck I just called it the Google Glass. Wow. So this is all about the Apple Glass Which is really hilarious because Google actually came out with their Google Glass Jeez back in like the Oh my goodness, like 2015, 2016, maybe even earlier than that, 14. Um, and with the Google Glass, it was essentially a pair of glasses that had camera on it in which you can kind of use um, to visually see things. Um, you can actually take pictures on it and stuff like that, but it just it flopped. It, there was no uh, real need for it, no real case for it. And then people didn't really take to it a whole lot just because of how they looked. 
so nothing really came of it now apple is now coming out with the apple glass um this was i just opened up this article today so this page was last updated three hours ago um so yeah i'm, I'm interested to see how this actually does take off uh, if the apple glass will actually become a thing uh, i actually myself wanted to get a pair of the google glass but um since it didn't really take off a whole bunch i didn't invest into it i think it was like two grand or something like that uh, which is another thing how much are these apple glasses going to actually cost um, developers would use this apple vr headset to work on generating 3d objects and software that would ultimately be used in apple glass this product development could take years leading to the potential release sometime in 2025 or later um, so the apple glass is probably not going to be something we see here soon um, and this article really just goes through and I, I guess this is as I say fictional uh, what they think it would look like there's no real you know hard set on what this design is going to be uh, they do have a couple of patents as you can see here but of course all of that could actually change um, Apple does have the Apple watch um, looks like you probably would be able to sync up your Apple Glass to your iPhone device, stuff like that. Um, wow, I mean. Yeah, so again, I'll leave this link. I mean, it's a very, very long, intensive article. Uh, I'll leave the link inside of the description for this YouTube video. So please do go ahead and check it out. And the last thing about Apple here is that in 2023 January there is supposedly going to be um, I don't know if it's going to be a release or if they're going to officially announce this AR slash VR headset that they have um, this image here has been floating around the web for quite some time so I think they did like a pre leak you know intro to what it might actually be um, so yeah so let me know definitely what you guys think about Apple uh, diving into the metaversal world. I mean, come on, you guys had to have seen that coming. Apple is a huge company, tech company. Um, I can't see any reason why they don't get this done um, in a, in a, I don't want to say in a way better than Google because Google actually did do a good job with their, uh, their Google Glass. Um, I don't know if they can like just kind of roll it back out now that everybody's really interested in AR technology. Um, but it would be kind of interesting to see uh, Google and Apple kind of head-to-head on their uh, devices there. Alrighty, and the next thing here is about Meta. So the Facebook parent company Meta has a platform called the Presence Platform. And this platform is essentially just for developers. Um, and they're just going to allow developers to go onto their platform the presence platform and allow them to go ahead and start creating stuff for the metaverse uh, if you're already a developer and you already do this you're probably wondering well heck I already do this with uh, the oculus platform so oculus headset the VR headsets from Google um, from Facebook meta uh, they already have a platform that does this but there are two key main differences with this uh, the main differences is that the oculus platform SDK is meant for social VR use cases it has APIs for quick invites, notifications, avatar management, and other core capabilities. But now the presence platform, on the other hand, is purpose-built for uh, mixed reality applications, particularly for scenarios that uh, intersect virtual worlds and objects with real ones. Um, so in short, essentially the Oculus platform is mainly for virtual reality um, keeping everything inside virtual reality and so on and so forth. But now with this presence platform, they are trying to dive into what they call the mixed reality world. Um, and from the mixed reality world, they start getting into AR technology and all of that stuff there. And I have a quick video here as well. I got another link uh, to another article that kind of just explains this in, in a little bit more detail. It's like a little teaser trailer for you guys. Uh, probably won't play the whole thing. It's like three minutes long or something like that. But just want to play a little bit of it here.
Last year at Connect, we introduced Presence Platform, a suite of machine perception and AI capabilities that enable developers to build natural interactions and mixed reality experiences on Quest. Mixed reality is an important step on the path towards the metaverse. It blends elements of your real life environment with virtual worlds that you can interact with, opening up new possibilities for productivity and fun. Let's scale this up 5%. That looks more balanced. I'll send these changes back to the team. Talk to you later. Over the last few months, we've rolled out Presence Platform to developers one feature at a time, meaning realistic and immersive mixed reality is possible on Quest right now. Bring a bit of your living room into your VR environment, or vice versa. Presence Platform's pass-through and scene understanding capabilities let developers build mixed reality experiences that are aware of where objects and surfaces are in the room with you. So you can go fishing under your living room floor or join the fish underwater. Easy to integrate hand and voice interactions help developers build mixed reality experiences that feel natural and intuitive. Hello? Ready for stage two. And spatial anchors enable developers to place virtual objects onto real surfaces that are persistent across sessions. So you can pick up that chess game right where you left off. Checkmate. These experiences are amazing on Quest 2, but how do we take them to the next level? With color. Project Cambria is our next cutting edge VR headset. New sensors will enable high definition color pass through to boost the realism of these experiences. All right, so I'm just gonna leave it off right there. Um, Project Cambria is actually pretty exciting. I'm going to do a segment on that later on here in the future. But I guess the two main things that I want to point out about um, uh, the Meta, I forget what it's called already, Presence Platform. Uh, the Meta Presence Platform, the two main things is the pass-through technology. So essentially, instead of having your virtual reality headset on and you can only see what's in the virtual reality world, it has like little cameras on the outside so you can actually see in black and white, grayish color, what's in the world, I mean, what's in the room with you. Uh, so if you're in a bedroom, you'll see a bed, you'll see a dresser, you'll see a chair, you'll see whatever else as well. And then you can also utilize it as a AR technology headset in which you can actually integrate interact with the room as well as some virtual digital assets in it. Uh, the second thing that I like is the, um, the anchors. So the anchors basically just put something someplace and when you come back to the same room, exact room, it's going to remain that same place. So for example, if you put a thumbtack on a roll on a wall with a picture on it, you can actually put a digital picture on the wall, anchor it to that wall, and it'll actually stay there for ever, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, so definitely take a look into that. Uh, if you don't want a Oculus headset, you want to wait till that Cambria headset comes out where it has a whole bunch more technology in it, I would definitely um, say go ahead and do that because Cambria, in my opinion, will be a whole different beast. Uh, but if you are a developer, definitely check out the new Presence platform, uh, which I'll be actually checking that out myself and seeing uh, how far we can actually take it. All right. And so the last thing here is electric vehicles are really big because they don't use gas. But in order for them to be powered, they have to use batteries. As we know, batteries have to be changed out all the time. But how exactly do you change a battery in an electric vehicle? I mean, those batteries are, geez, depending on the vehicle, depending on the battery size, it could be like a, I don't know, a toy chest or a, I don't even know. <laughs> it's, 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 it's different with every car. I mean, I've seen them as small as like a uh, laptop bag, but I've also seen them uh, as big as like, I don't know. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff around me here, a laundry basket or something like that, if I can, if I can call it that. But uh, there was a video that came out that actually showed what changing a uh, electric vehicle battery entailed. Uh, I was having some trouble with this video earlier, so hopefully it plays pretty well for me here now. done right 
Let's meet Ample. So Ample is the company that is swapping out these batteries. Um, people have tried to do it themselves, but it the automatically just failed. There's this big metal frame you see under here, which is essentially an adapter. This is where the factory battery was. Here you've got a robot coming in and doing the essential work of a battery swap at an Ample station. It's reaching up here into this conversion sort of adapter interface that they put on the car which replaced the factory battery. And now you've got a series of trays. It's about to undo one right now with these electronic servo lockers. It's, it's undoing right now. There we go. Okay, so here's what the robot just pulled out from that car as that finishes up. This is that tray we saw come out. The robot takes that down, moves it out. Inside I mean, that's like as big as a desktop computer. Inside there are non-proprietary cells, the kind that are used fairly widely around the EV industry. They don't try to reinvent that wheel, but this and this is what they've done different to create just the right level of granularity, they say, to make this work and to hit that sweet spot between monolithic batteries that EVs have today and a changeable battery that is custom enough but also common enough for this whole idea to work. What's key about this system is that they're not taking the factory battery and replacing it with another giant battery that every car maker would have to agree to use. The logic here is that it's a lot easier to build some kind of a custom interface for every electric car. So yeah, so you guys can definitely go ahead and check that video out. I'll leave again the link to that article or that site in the description. Um, but. The only thing I see about that is that mechanics are not going to lose their job, but they're going to have to really upskill themselves uh, in a way to, you know, um, battle that. I mean, it's, it's going to be a real challenge to be a mechanic who's been around working on cars uh, from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, uh, all the way up to now where you have to work on an electric vehicle and the battery itself is like the size of a house or something like that. So <laughs> it's going to be pretty interesting how that all works out. Uh, will we have to use robots just to get an oil change, uh, use robots just to get, you know, a tire change and stuff like that. There's been a lot of work uh, around, you know, tires now not being made out of rubber and being made out of another material, maybe integrated right into the axle and stuff like that. So do you have to take out the whole frame um, just to change the tire? I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, it's all pretty interesting how this all is going to shape and work out. Uh, robots are really doing a heavy lifting for us. So definitely thank you for that. But then what's going to happen if we don't have to do any heavy lifting ourselves? Time will only tell. All right. So that is all I have for you guys here today. I definitely appreciate your time. As always, please do check all the links in the description and let me know in the comments what you think about everything um, if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me on any of my social media channels and until next time you guys take it easy